going more and more in the direction of the holy name, which is the ultimate gift. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared to bestow. When Mother Sachi was pregnant with Lord Garanga in her womb, and her pregnancy was approaching the 13th month, she was quite apprehensive. So she approached her grandfather, Nilambar Chakravarti, who was a great astrologer. And he made his astrological prediction that the child is simply waiting for the most auspicious time to make his appearance. And paradoxically, that most auspicious time was the lunar eclipse, which is considered by the Hindus to be very inauspicious. And because they considered it to be inauspicious, all the Hindus were running to the Ganges to take bath, and everyone was chanting Hare Krishna. And to joke with the Hindus, the Muslims are all also chanting Hare Krishna. And when everyone was chanting Hare Krishna, and all the Hindus, all the Muslims, all of nature rose as if in one voice, chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Auspicious, keeping that all auspicious name before him, the Lord made his appearance. And throughout his childhood pastimes, before he was even revealing his divine nature, if you look at it from one angle, it's a progression of encouraging the holy name of Krishna. When the child was just a baby, he would cry for no apparent reason. And there was one, only one thing that pacified him, which was the chanting of the holy name. When he grew just large enough to stand on his own, when the ladies were chanting Hare Krishna, he would dance. And that encouraged and inspired him, them in their chanting because it gave him so much pleasure. And seeing his pleasure gave them pleasure. And then when he matured a little bit more and he could run, as he was dancing in the circle of the ladies who were all chanting Hare Krishna for his pleasure, he would suddenly run out into the streets and then in no time he would run back with his little childlike hands filled with sandesh and other varieties of sweets. And with his own lotus hands, he would distribute to everyone who was chanting Hare Krishna the sweets that he had begged on their behalf. He was very mischievous and he would demand things that were impossible to provide the moon, the stars, a bird that flew across the sky, he would say, I must have it. And he would get very angry and pound the floor and very demanding. It was very difficult for Mother Sachi until she realized the secret. Just chant Hare Krishna. And he would forget all his other desires and demands. It was not overt until, actually, he disclosed his mission one time in East Bengal when he went there to teach. 
thousands were coming to him because the fact that Nimai Pandit had come to East Bengal was considered a great blessing for the East Bengalis because if anybody wanted to be recognized the only time before his initiation, but he clearly told him that the goal and purpose of human life is to develop love for Krishna. The means to do so is the chanting of the holy name. The specific mantra you should chant consists of 16 words and 32 syllables and goes as such. Hare Krishna! And then he also quoted from the scriptures the Hare Krishna mantra and the Hadinam, 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 Eva Kevalam, Kalonis, Devanis, Devanis, Deva, Gatiranita. And he told them that from this holy name, more and more realization will continue to dawn within your heart. But in Nadia, he found, as we've been discussing, that the pundits could not appreciate the gift he came to offer. And for that reason, he was contemplating that I've brought the nectar from Goloka, but it is turned into poison because of their offenses. But if I return to them as a sannyasi, begging, that will correct their offensive mentality 
and they will be able to receive the gift I have come to offer. So Mahaprabhu took sannyas. He returned to Nadia, maybe ten years later. He appeared at the house of Vidyavachaspati in Vidinagar. And when word spread throughout Navadvip that the Lord has returned, everyone ran because that period of separation rectified their mentality. It sobered them. Then why do we criticize him? Why were we so unfortunate and ungrateful to criticize him that he had to perform this devastating act of taking sannyas, not only devastating to Mother Sachi and Vishnu Priya, but everyone was feeling the separation. So when word got around that he'd returned to Vidyanagar, which was where Savrabhama Bhattacharya had his academy before contemplating that this teaching and study and absorption and, and nyaya will simply drown Garanga. He will not be pleased. But since he is my Lord and I am his servant, if I leave and become a renowned Mayavadi, he will come to me. So he accepted the offer of King Prataparudra to be the Raj Pandit. So when word traveled that he had returned, everyone just ran. And huge crowds appeared, desiring his forgiveness. But Mahaprabhu was trying to avoid the crowds, so he went into the house of Vidyabhachaspati and just disappeared. And the people were demanding, let us have his darshan. And he was saying, he's gone. And they were criticizing him. If one has so many sweets and he won't share them, he's just a miser. So Vidyavachaspati was already devastated by the fact that Mahaprabhu had come to his, into his home and then just disappeared. And now everyone was criticizing him and he was just praying, Lord, save me from this dilemma. And his redemption came in the form of another report that the Lord has appeared in Kulia. And then the thousands that had come and congregated at Vidyanagar turned and ran the other direction. And as they were running, they were proclaiming that he's in Kulia. And everyone in the region of Vidyanagar, they all ran. It was just like the gopis hearing the sound of Krishna's flute. Whatever they were doing, they just left. That Goranga has returned. And this, this huge roar of Goranga as they proceeded to the Ganges. And they already had so many boats lined up to carry the tens of thousands of people across. And one boat can hold, what, 10, 20 people? Like 150 people jumped in every boat. They sank every boat. Somehow or other, the people, they were just like making their own roads. They were knocking down the forests and the jungles. And they just somehow, by taking, you know, trunks of banana trees or water pots or somehow or other, they all got across. And when Lord Garanga appeared on the rooftop in Kulia, all you could see in all directions, there was no Ganges, there was no fields, there was no rice paddies, and just heads, and this huge uproar of Goranga. <laughs> which is an important accompaniment to the chanting. The, rather, this the Panchatattva Maha Mantra. They don't, the Panchatattva does not accept offenses, so we chant their holy names before entering into the very sacred Maha Mantra. So, when they converged, when the crowd converged upon at Kulia, Everyone was in a repentant mood and they were praying like for the welfare of, you know, some family relative who was not favorable towards devotional service, but especially it is famous as the place where all offenses are forgiven. 
because those who had offended, those who had blasphemed the Lord, they were begging his forgiveness. And he gave one general remedy. If with your mouth you have drunk poison, then now your only redemption is to drink nectar in the form of the holy name. So, <clears throat> returning to Jagannath Puri, <clears throat> Lord Garanga told <clears throat> Sri Nityananda Prabhu that if you just stay here in Puri like a peaceful, saintly person, the world will be diminished. If you resume your wild nature as the Avadut, then the world will be delivered. And especially the rest of Bengal, outside of Navadweep, you must return there and spread the chanting of the Holy Name. So, Lord Nityananda, he taking Ram Das and Gadadhar Das and the rest of the 12 Gopals, they headed for West Bengal. But they were so immersed in the mellows of devotion by their chanting of the holy names that Gadadhar Das, who is actually amongst, Lord, he's actually Gopi, Chandrakanti, the golden effulgence of Srimati Radharani personified. So in that mood, Gadadhar Das would just be selling yogurt. And Ram Das was in the, the rest were in the mood of cowherd boys, and they were very playful. And they kept forgetting where they were going. So every now and then they'd ask directions. Oh, you just missed the road, you know, six hours back. So they'd laugh and, and go back, and then they remember, we better ask directions. And they ask, oh, you just missed it again, 12 hours back that way. Finally, somehow, they returned to West Bengal and made their headquarters at the house of Raghava Pandit. And there, they would have kirtan for months on end. For three months, nobody would go home. The children would not eat. They wouldn't go home. Everybody was just immersed in the kirtan. And one day, Raghava Pandit, or Lord Nityananda, he asked Raghava Pandit that, I would like a garland made of kadamba flowers. Raghava Pandit said, well, <laughs> kadamba flowers don't grow here. They grow in Vrindavan. And it's not even the season in Vrindavan, so how are we going to get Kadamba flowers? Nitai said, just go out and see if you can find some. So he went out, and then he smelled this fragrance of Kadamba flowers. Very strong. He looked, Where is that coming from? And he looked. It was coming from his lemon tree. His lemon tree was blossoming profusely with Kadamba flowers. So he quickly picked them and made a garland and offered it to Lord Nityananda. And the scent of that garland when offered to Lord Nityananda just infused all the devotees with more ecstasy than even before. And then a wonderful thing happened. The fragrance of Kadamba flowers which pervaded Raghava Pandit's home changed to the scent of Damanaka flowers. Everyone's looking around, where is that coming from? And the, the lemon tree was still full of kadamba flowers. They couldn't find where the scent of Damanaka flowers was coming from. And the devotees were just intoxicated by his fragrance. So they had to turn to Lord Nityananda, you tell us, reveal where it's coming from. And Lord Nityananda told them that my brother, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in Puri, has taken the form of a Damanaka tree. 
He's come to watch your kirtan. He's here, invisible to your eyes, but you're sensing his presence by this fragrance. So, one thing that was very distinct in the life of Srila Prabhupada, and he even said it in his own words, which are so rich with humility, which he wrote in his diary on the Jaladutta, seeing the horrible skyline of Boston. That, my Lord, I don't know why you brought me to this horrible place. These people are so infested with the modes of passion and ignorance. How will they take up the pure teachings of Shaitanya Mahaprabhu? But you are the supreme magician, and you can make me dance. Make me dance, make me dance, Lord. Make me dance according to your desire. I have no knowledge, and I have no devotion, Srila Prabhupada said. But I do have complete faith in the chanting of the holy name. This is the gift of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In every yuga, there is a yuga avatar who teaches the yuga dharma. And even in the Kali Yuga, there's usually a yuga, there's always a yuga avatar. But what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he comes to savor some specific flavor about himself, as well as to delve deeply into the heart, the love in the heart of Srimati Radharani, which he distributes in the form of the chanting of the holy name. He creates some fabulous good fortune which spreads upon the surface of this earth, which has never previously or will ever be given by anyone else. And therefore, Rupa Goswami prays, Namo Mahavadinaya Krishna Prema Padayate, Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gorise Namaha. You've given what even Krishna himself did not bestow. Krishna revealed it, but he did not bestow it. Krishna was thinking of appearing in this world to savor the mellows of devotional love and to propagate a path of Raganug Bhakti. But Krishna did not propagate that path. He revealed it, but he did not bestow a method to achieve it. And therefore, after Krishna's disappearance from this world, he was thinking that his mission was unsuccessful. The living entities are my children. I'm responsible for their welfare. And Krishna Lila did not really benefit the world at large very much other than the sages of Dandakaranya and the personified Shrutis. No one else was actually able to enter into Braj Lila. So he was thinking he had to return again and give a process by which anyone simply by accepting his simple and sublime process of chanting the holy name would become eligible to enter into the sweet and holy groves of Braj. But simply obtaining a great fortune does not necessarily mean you will have the ability to appreciate it. And we discussed the other night offering a huge precious gem to little tiny ant. He'll be appreciative if you give him a grain of sugar. If you give him a precious gem, it's just an obstacle to him. And the reason is he does not have the faculties to appreciate its utility or value. And he'll have no appreciation. So similarly, the conditioned souls of this world endowed with a similar lack of qualifications like that of the tiny ant, having given such a precious gem. But 
They did not have, nobody in this world ever had the ability to appreciate the value and the utility of that gem. And therefore, in the Satya Yuga, the Yuga Dharma is meditation for 60,000 years concentrating on the super soul and realizing the form of the Lord through that meditation. In the Treta Yuga, realizing the Lord in the sacrificial fire after, tens of, after thousands of years of practice. In the Dipara Yuga, realizing the form of the Lord in the deity through the process of seva. But to think that what is achieved by that 60,000 years of meditation with rapt attention can not only be equaled, but far surpassed by the mere chanting of the holy names was something that the intellect of the jiva simply cannot fathom. And we see in the wonderful conversation between the Vishnu Dudas and the Yama Dudas, I mean the, the Yama Dudas and Yamaraj, after the event with Ajamil, the Yama Dudas returned to Yamaraj with many questions on their minds. First of all, they wanted to know who's, who's the supreme. I mean, anyway. When Yamaraj was answering their questions one by one, they started asking very intelligent questions that if, and, and evoking very wise responses for our illumination from Yamaraj, they asked why if the mere, not even pure chanting, Namabas, awards freedom from birth and death, liberation. Why so many scriptures prescribe so many other forms of atonement and liberation? And Yamaraj's answer was very wonderful. He said, the glories of the holy name are so unfathomable that even the great compilers of scripture could not conceive of the glories of the holy name, and therefore they prescribed other forms of atonement in Yuga Dharma. <clears throat> Not Yuga Dharma, other forms of atonement. But because the living entities in general cannot conceive of the glories of the holy name and the efficacy of that process, there are different forms for other ages. Whereas the holy name in any age is in itself competent to bestow a goal higher than that of the Yuga Dharma. But even when the holy name of the Lord is propagated by the Yuga Avatar in the age of Kali, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes as the Avatari, who is Krishna in the mood of Srimati Radharani, what he gives so far surpasses the Yuga Dharma. Yuga Dharma is like cooling yourself, trying to cool yourself on a hot human evening by fanning yourself with a palm leaf. But if a cool, soothing breeze flows off of the ocean, you don't need that palm leaf. So when the Lord comes to relish, He comes for His own internal purposes desiring to understand the glory of Srimati Radharani's love, the wonderful qualities in him which she alone can relish through her love, and the sublime happiness he feels when he tastes the sweetness of her love. He also shares with the world his own experience of his internal purposes in coming which then overlap with his external purposes of coming to bestow the Yuga Dharma 
and being attracted by the loud calls of Advaita Charya and the chanting of Haridas Thakur. So when Mahaprabhu comes in his original feature as the avatari, once only in a thousand yuga cycles, he spreads some fabulous good fortune upon the surface of the earth, which has never and will never be offered again except that once in a day of Brahma, that once in that protracted period of eight billion, six million years when he comes. And that is why Karabhajana Muni is emphasizing in the 11th canto in his instructions to King Nimi that the residents of Satya Yuga and Treta Yuga and Dupara Yuga, the, the, the universal administrators of higher planets in heaven, they're all praying to take birth in this Kali Yuga, this Kali Yuga, not the general Kali Yuga. Because the highest achievement conceivable, even beyond what's conceivable by the human intellect, is made so readily and easily available by the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And when you consider the wonderful pastimes that we've been hearing in perspective of the fact that the whole universe was delivered, what to speak of the fact that many of those associates who were delivered were eternal nityasiddhas, Rupa Sanatana Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, even Jagayan Madhai from a Vaikuntha perspective are the Lord's eternal associates. So their deliverance is not such a phenomenal event in context of the 48 years when Mahaprabhu was present because the whole universe was delivered. And his delivering his own Nitya Siddhas is not such a phenomenal event from a limited perspective, but is meant for an unlimited perspective of leaving this world a legacy of love regarding the chanting of the holy name and the efficacy of that holy name. Shaitanya Mahaprabhu did not appear simply to deliver the universe. That was one part of his leela. The other part was to leave a method by which anyone in the universe could be delivered thereafter. Not to Vaikuntha as following the Yuga Dharma can fulfill, but a process by which for the rest of the Kali Yuga there would be a means to achieve shelter in Goloka Vrindavan. So even though such a great fortune has been offered to this world, on the one hand, on the other hand, there is no more horrible period in history. And that is because Kali, the predominating lord of this age, knows that this is Kali Yuga in name only. Srila Prabhupada said it is stated that there will be a 10,000 year golden age when Krishna consciousness becomes very prevalent in this world which means that Kali will no longer have dominion. And therefore he has escalated his attack on the expectant pilgrims, homebound pilgrims, to cover their in intelligence with smoke screens of deception, to incite quarrel and hypocrisy is his service which is actually a service to the Lord because in this Leela the Lord does not take up arms. He does not kill the demons physically but kills them with the, kills the demoniac propensity with the love which is concentrated in the Hare Krishna mantra. The killing of the demons is performed as a secondary act by the influence of Kali, just as Krishna did not have to personally arrange the disappearance of the Jadu dynasty, but it happened itself by internal discord. 
So, by conflict amongst the great demons of this world, they will annihilate themselves. But what the devotees have to very vigilantly watch is that Kali's secret undercover agents do not infiltrate our consciousness with the propensity for quarrel and hypocrisy in our own relationships. Because Kali is empowered. His influence is beyond what the jiva soul can resist. And therefore, we have to very strictly and sincerely take shelter of the holy name. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu emphasized <clears throat> two things of equal value, chanting of the holy name and service to the devotees. They're inseparable. And another thing he equally emphasized was to avoid criticizing devotees. Because as we heard, that when Mahaprabhu turned black due to being, due to having absorbed the unlimited sins of Jaga and Madhai. And the devotees were shocked to see the golden form of the Lord transmute into a blackish form. And seeing their condition, Mahaprabhu asked Advaita Acharya, how do I look? He said, you look like Shama Sundar. So how to return him to that golden form? He said, have kirtan. And by that kirtan, all these sins will go into the hearts of the offenders. So the influence of Kali is beyond what the jiva soul can resist. But we have the protection of the holy name and the Vaishnava association. But the problem is, in this world, anything if regularly perceived as easily available, we take to tend, we tend to take for granted. Even the most phenomenal events in this world, if they're readily and easily available, we tend to take them for granted. How the sun rises every morning in a completely predictable manner. We go into a dark, room and turn on the light switch and we're very impressed with how modern technology dispels the darkness. We take for granted how the sun rises every morning and dispels the darkness and cold throughout the universe. We see sculptors, sculptures, and are very impressed but how the tiny spark of consciousness can enter into the womb of a, of a woman and develop through you know, youth and maturity and old age and all these infinite varieties of forms and then disappear going who, who knows where. We're not so impressed because we see birth and maturity taking place everywhere. We see newer and newer forms of airplanes flying in the sky, and we might be impressed. But the fact that we're living on a spacecraft who is a very loving mother, an expansion of Satyabhama, who is an expansion of Srimati Radharani, a great devotee, in the form of Earth, who is hurtling through space at phenomenal speed in perfect orbit, carrying innumerable living entities in their homes, in the oceans, in the rivers, in the mountains. It doesn't even register because it's a gift so readily and easily made available. 
that even though we may register with our knowledge acquiring senses and possibly even register with the mind, still the wonder of the event does not enter into the realm of consciousness and therefore we really fail to appreciate the wonders that are naturally and easily available to us. And the greatest misfortune for which Mahaprabhu laments with tearful voice and heartfelt words, Etadrishi Tava Kripa Bhagavan Mamapi Durdaiva Midisha Mahajani Nanuragaha. That, my Lord, you're so merciful that you've invested all your love in the form of the holy name. But I am so unfortunate that I have no attraction for it. Identifying the misfortune which tends to inflict the living entities, Mahaprabhu cried out that verse. And to give us some appreciation of the glories of the holy name and the efficacy of chanting, he revealed his wonderful pastimes. When Srila Prabhupada came to New Vrindavan, I believe it was 1974, and he was looking at the beautiful deities, Sri Sri Radha Vrindavan Chandra, and appreciating how they were served with such love and devotion. He also commented that Krishna consciousness has two important dimensions. Vaidhi, or <clears throat> Bhagavat Dharma, Pancharataka Vidhi, and Bhagavat Dharma. He said, of the two, Bhagavat Dharma is most important. And he defined Bhagavat Dharma as hearing and chanting. And he gave a very grave warning, which in retrospect was like a prophecy. If you neglect your Bhagavat Dharma, your hearing and chanting, about the holy names and glories and pastimes of the Lord, the day will come when your service to the deity you will see as a burden. And you will think about your spiritual master that that rascal, he has left me with this burden. These are very difficult words to hear. Very painful, but very important. Because Mahaprabhu revealed his pastimes, Krishna revealed that his pastimes, not just for the sake of that limited period of time when they were present in this world, but for the rest of history, that we can appreciate how the glories and the pastimes of the Lord are all contained in the holy name of the Lord. And when that holy name takes root within our hearts, it'll gradually fructify. And as it fructifies, developing into a creeper and proceeding to take shelter of a desire tree in Goloka Vrindavan, it will reveal everything. That holy name will reveal the qualities, the pastimes, the nature of the Lord, and our own individual relationship with the Lord. If we take the chanting of the holy name with as much care and attention as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu cleansing the Gundicha temple, representing our own hearts. How to make them an appropriately clean and cool and soothing residence for Krishna to return. That is the mood of Rathayatra. Taking the reins of the chariots, pulling Krishna and Balaram back to Vrindavan. And Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in his afterward to Navadvipa Mahatmya, his Bhavataranga, 
which is like reflections on the glories of the Dham, which he revealed in his Navadvip Dham Mahatmya. But he's more and more entering into the Holy Dham by remembering the pastimes of the Lord revealed there. And he says, when I see Mahaprabhu at Kulia, it is like the gopis seeing Krishna at Kurukshetra. Similar mood. When Mahaprabhu appeared at Kulia, he was as a sinasi. That was his plan. They would become repentant. They would not take him for granted if he performed this severe act of the, although he's the supreme enjoyer, he's becoming the supreme renunciate. So it had that, that effect of making the sinners and offenders repentant, but it had another dimension of effect. It was just like seeing that form of that golden sannyasi at the rooftop in Kulia was just like, this is Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's words as he's entering into his own Siddha Swarup as Kamala Manjari. Seeing Mahaprabhu as a sannyasi on that rooftop in Kulia makes me just want to take him back to the temple of Srivas because Srivas Angam is Vrindavan where Rasalila is performed in the form of the kirtans there. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is revealing that Mahaprabhu re reveal, manifesting himself at Kulia as a sannyasi is just like to the residents of Nadia, it's just like Krishna meeting with the Brijabhasis in Kurukshetra. That meeting did not relieve the separation but rather intensified it because Krishna was in the garb of royalty, surrounded by his military entourage of elephants, chariots, and warriors. It did not mitigate the separation of the bridge of Isis, it deepened it. Devotees desire to deepen their love for Krishna, and Krishna fulfills that desire by interspersing their experience with episodes of separation. First, we have to have some love. Because before there is love, what we take as separation is just blatant ignorance. But when there is love, we want to deepen that experience, and Krishna fulfills that desire by episodes of separation. So seeing him as a sannyasi fulfilled that effect, or rather enhanced the effect of evoking a sense of repentance amongst the offenders, but it also amongst the devotees, deepened their separation. He's come back, but we don't want to see him as a sannyasi. We want to see that long flowing hair cascading across his shoulders and the beautiful decorations given by Mother Sachi and the beautiful garland swinging as he dances. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur writes, I know he's my lord and I'm his servant. I should not make demands and place expectations, but oh, I wish I could take him back to the <laughs> temple of Srivas. So we should not take the pastimes of the Lord to be historical events. On the one hand, they are historical. But Truly speaking, it is absolute revelation coming to us through the medium of history, meant to give us an appreciation, especially Gorlila, meant not only for the deliverance of the individuals or the universe at that time, but meant to give us appreciation of the holy name as the most precious jewel of Goloka Vrindavan, the treasure, Golokera Premadana Hadinama Sankirtan, which we should guard with great care and attention.
within our hearts where it will eventually dispel all darkness and ignorance and award the highest achievement conceivable for the living entities. Entrance into Krishna's Vrindavan pastimes, which is only possible by the mercy and the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as <coughs> brought to us by the agent of his mercy, his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.